Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Gifford here, and today we're going to talk about section 8.3, quadratic equations. And after this lesson, students will be able to factor and solve quadratic equations. So what is a quadratic equation? It's an equation that can be written in the form of, oops, there should be a little a right here, ax squared plus bx plus c, and that first coefficient, that a, cannot be negative. And the other thing that we need to look for is this x squared term, because that's that key or that tip off that we have a quadratic equation. So how do we factor x squared plus bx plus c? So the first thing that we're going to do is find two integers. We're going to call them m and p with a sum of b and a product of c. So the first thing we're going to do is look for factor pairs of this very last term, this c, and then we're going to look to see which of those factor pairs adds up to this middle term. And then in this case, both x, or excuse me, both the b and the c of our quadratic are positive. So we're going to set up two binomials, and each of the two binomials gets to have addition in the middle of them. Now, later we're going to look at what happens um, if you don't have all positive. So for this first one, we have b and c are positive, those coefficients, and the coefficient and also that plain constant, and we're going to factor. So again, the first step is to find two integers um, that have this product of 24. And again, we need the numbers that multiply to make positive 24 that are going to add to a positive 11. So I know that all of my factor pairs are going to be positive. And so here are the four factor pairs that we have for 24. And from here, we're going to take a look at the sum of all of these factor pairs. And so in this case, we're looking for the one that adds up to 11, a positive 11. And so as you're looking at the list, which one is it? It's this third one. 3 plus 8 gives us 11. So what do we do? We set up two sets of parentheses. And because we have this d squared term out front, each parentheses gets a d because d times d is d squared. And then one of them is going to get plus 3, and one of them is going to get plus 8. Now, you could have put the 8 in the first one and done d plus 8 times the quantity of d plus 3. The commutative property is what allows us to do that. So it doesn't matter which parentheses which number goes into. So now let's take a look at this and look at how do we factor it when this last term is positive and this middle term has a negative. The steps are pretty much exactly the same. So we're going to find those two integers that we just talked about that, again, add up to that middle term, that middle coefficient, and have that product of this last number, the positive c. And then in this case, instead of having addition in the middle, each of the binomials is going to have subtraction. And that's because the negative times the negative gives us that positive c. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to factor this polynomial, and we have 21 minus 22m plus m squared. I'm going to make a suggestion that we rewrite it to get that squared term in the front. And because 21 right here is positive, we can put plus 21 at the end. Notice our plain number is positive, and our middle number is negative. And thinking back to when we talked about integers, you know that a negative times a negative gives us a positive. So now we need to take a look at those factor pairs of positive 21 that are going to give us a negative number. In this case, we just have these two factor pairs. And then we need to look at which one adds up to negative 22. And yes, that's correct. The first one does give us negative 22. So from here, again, you're going to set up your two binomials. Again, they each get an m as that first part because this is m squared. And m times m, when we FOIL it out, gives us m squared. And then one of them gets the minus 1, and one of them gets the minus 21. And again, you could have written it as m minus 21 and the quantity of m minus 1. Again, it doesn't matter which order. As you're solving these quadratic equations, you might be getting to the point where you don't have to list out all the factor pairs. Um, you might be able to figure it out in your head, or once you list them out, you find the one that works. You don't have to keep listing all of those factor pairs. 
So now let's look at this third one. And in this one, if you look, if you see it closely, the last term is negative. The first two we did, the last term was positive. But we're going to look at what do you do when the middle term is positive and what do you do when the middle term is negative. So this may not be any surprise, but we are going to factor it the exact same way we just did the other two. Look for two numbers that multiply to make that plain number that add up to the middle term. And then depending on what those numbers are that you're going to use, one of the expressions is going to get plus and one is going to get minus. How do you know? It totally depends on what your factor pair is. And so we're going to take a look at this um, first example with number three, where that last number, that plain number, the constant, is negative, And the middle number in this case is positive. So we need to think of all of the factor pairs of negative 48. So I've got negative 1 and 48, 1 and negative 48. Now in this case, I think I'm going to keep going until I get the one that adds up to 13. So I've got negative 2 and 24. I've got 2 and negative 24. I've got negative 3 and 16. Oop, there's my answer because I'm looking for a positive 13. And I know that negative 3 plus 16 gives us that positive 13. So from here, again, each of the expressions gets a y. And then this is where some of you might have thought, well, how do you know which one gets adding and which one gets subtraction? Because 3 is negative, there's the subtraction. And because 16 is positive, whoops, that should be 16. Because 16 is positive, then that one gets the positive 16. Again, you could have written it as y plus 16 times the quantity of y minus 3. Again, that commutative property. So now let's take a look at it where this last number is negative and the middle number is also negative. This coefficient of the R term is also negative. So we're going to use the factor pairs of negative 24. And I'm going to stop when I get it. So there's negative 1 times 24. That adds up to positive 23. I've got 1 and negative 24. That's negative 23. I have negative 2 and 12. That adds up to 10. I've got 2 and negative 12. There's negative 10. I have negative 3 and 8, which is 5. 3 and negative 8 adds up to negative 5. And then I have negative 4 and 6. That equals positive 2. And go figure, the last factor pair that I came up with is the one that we need. So we're going to use 4 and negative 6. So again, I'm going to set up both of our binomials here. They each get an R, and one will get plus 4, and one will get that minus 6. So now we're going to take um, these skills that we learned about factoring quadratics, and we're going to look at how can we solve quadratics. And the first thing that we notice is that we're going to solve it when x equals, or excuse me, when the equation equals 0. So the first thing we're going to do is set one side of our equation equal to 0, so get all of everything else over on one side. Then like we've been practicing, we're going to factor. Then step 3, once we factor it, we're going to set each of those factors equal to 0. Step 4 is then solve. And then step 5, as any good algebraist does, we're going to check our solutions to make sure that what we have is what we need. So now let's do an example. So we've got this equation, z squared minus 3z equals 70. So the first thing that you notice is that this side, it does not equal 0. And that's the very first thing we need to do with solving quadratics. So we're going to take it, that 70 and get it over to the other side so we can make that 0 on the right-hand side. So then we have z squared minus 3z minus 70 equals 0. From here, we do what we've done in all of the other examples before this. We need to list the factor pairs of negative 70 that are going to add up to negative 3. So we have negative 1 and 70. 1 and negative 70. Well, that's not our negative 3 that we need. So then we have negative 2 and 35. That's 33. So 2 and negative 35 is negative 33. And then we have um, 3 doesn't go into it, 
4 does. We have negative 4 and 15. That's uh, 11. And 4 and negative 15 is negative 11. So we're getting closer. Uh, 5 goes into it. So we have 5 and um, 14. So negative 5 and 14, that's a positive 9. And 5 and negative 14, that's negative 9. Um, 6 does not, 7 does. Negative 7 and 10 gives us 3. And of course, the very last pair in this case gives us what we want. So we've got the 7 and negative 10. So as the direction said, we're going to factor like we did before. So we have z plus 7 times the quantity of z minus 10. And we're going to take each um, factor and set it equal to 0 and make these mini equations. And then from here, we're going to solve each of our little mini equations for the variable z. Whoops, that should be subtraction. So <clears throat> minus 7. And so this first equation gives us x equals negative 7. And the second equation, we're going to add 10 to both sides. And so that gives us z equals 10. So from here, we're pretty sure that these are our solutions. So now we need to take each of our solutions and plug them back into our equation and check to make sure that um, it will work in our equation. So we have negative 7 squared minus 3 times negative 7 minus 70, and we're going to check to see if this is equal to 0. So we have negative 7 squared. That means negative 7 times negative 7. So we have 49. And then negative 3 times negative 7. Negative times a negative is a positive 21. And then we have this minus 70. And then we have 49 plus 21. Well, 49 plus 20 is 69 plus 1 is 70. So we have 70 minus 70. And that does equal 0. So we for sure know that this negative 7 works. And now we're going to do the same thing with our positive 10. So we have 10 squared minus 3 times 10 minus 70. And we're going to check to see if it equals 0. 10 squared is 100. Negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. And 100 minus 30 is 70. And 70 minus 70 is 0. So again, that gives us what we want. So going back to here, our two solutions for this quadratic equation are negative 7 and 10. So that is it for 8.3, folks.